Hello YouTubers, how's it going? Today, we are going to be working on an iPhone 6s with a shaking back camera. Here's the phone I'm talking about. And as you can see, my hand is perfectly stable, but the camera appears to be shaking. And you can see the uh, shaking effects more clearly if I do this. But the camera is still shaking. If I move my camera closer, yeah, the shaking is more apparent. Move it when I move it away. Yeah, you can see that too. Yeah, it checks even more when I move my cameras away. Okay, so um, before we open the phone, we need to know what we are going to be looking at. So we are going to need uh, this schematic, and here is a schematic for iPhone 6s Plus. So what is a schematic? Schematic is like a blueprint for your house. Basically the schematic shows you a network of all the components like the resistor, the capacitor, the diode and inductors, etc. that make up the entire phone. And in this case, since we have a problem with the rear camera, so we're going to browse through this schematic to find rear camera. But just to save time, I'm going to just type in rear camera here. Okay, here we go. Rear camera flex. Let's have a look at the socket. So here is the socket J3200. Basically, that's the name of the socket where you connect the FPC's connector onto the board. And it has 33 pins. Some of the pins do not have any lines extending from them like pin 4, pin 3, pin 10. So um, the pins that do not have lines extending from them are basically connected to ground. So you, you don't have to worry about them. But for pins like uh, 2, 6 and 16, they are connected to something. For example, let's check out pin 2. Pin 2 is connected to component on rail 21. It's right here. Right, it's connected to uh, another network called PP1V2RCAM Digitalcon. I don't even know what that means, but I know it has something to do with all these components. So uh, these are examples of the components that are responsible for the functioning of the rear camera. So we have capacitors and inductors. Capacitors begins with letter C, inductors usually begins with letter FL or you can look at the symbol you know capacitors are denoted with two strips but inductors are denoted with coil okay so basically um, you're gonna have to visit each of this component and run a check on them um, to test capacitor you will have to connect one probe of your multimeter to ground and attach the other probe to each of the terminals. And you should hear the beep sound only once because capacitors do not conduct electricity. Under normal circumstances, there should not be any current flowing through capacitors. And you can tell when a capacitor is shorted when you power on your device and you touch a capacitor with your finger. The one that gets really hot is the one that has already been shorted to ground. You can tell. Okay, so these are the components that we have to run uh, the check on. There's quite a few of them. How do we locate these components on the board? We're going to need another software application it's called a, a board view application. I think that's what they call. Um, like this, for example, here's the board view application. So basically, you're going to have to find the models that, that you are working on. Like in my case, I'm working on iPhone 6S Plus. So here we go, iPhone 6S Plus. Oh, that's iPhone 6 Plus. Let's try it again. iPhone 6S Plus, all right. Okay, to see where some of the components are located, for example, uh, if you want to find where C3211 is located on the board, I can just go to the board view and type C3211. Okay, and the board viewer quickly shows you where uh, the capacitor 3211 is located. So it's located right next to pin 8 and pin 10. Okay, 
is right here. So you can fly C3211 on the board right next to these two pins. And then what you can do is you can connect the black probe to ground. Here's the ground. Okay, ground is denoted by the gray color. And then connect your other probe to the terminal that is not grounded. For example, if I connect my red probe here, right, to the, to the yellow circle, and my black probe to the ground, I should not hear any beep sounds. So if your multimeter is on um, continuity checking mode and you connect a black probe to the ground and a red probe to the, to the terminal that is, that is not grounded, and if you hear the sounds, then that means this is a back capacitor. It's shorted. And you can you know, use a soldering iron or a hot air to get rid of it. But instead of, of running a check on every single component, I'm going to use a technique called Rose and Smoke. You basically uh, dip your soldering iron onto a hot flux, and then you smear the tip of your soldering iron over the components that you want to test. So uh, once your board is covered up in smoke, then you power on the device, and a back capacitor will reveal itself when you see the smoke goes away. And then you can do something about it, get rid of it, or replace it with another one. Okay, so that's it. So uh, let's open up the phone. Okay, so let's open up this phone to find out what might be the cause of the problem. But first thing first, let's switch off the phone. Okay, so just to rule out suspects like shorted capacitors, I'm going to use Rosen core technique to identify a bad capacitor if there is any. So here we go. This is a, a hard flux or a Rosen flux. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my soldering iron into the hard flux. And I'm going to just smear this on the logic board. So let the smoke stick to the uh, component. Okay, now you can see um, many components near the rear camera socket are covered in smoke. 
Now I'm going to just uh, reconnect the battery to the logic board and switch this on. Okay. I don't see anything. All right, so let's clean up the smoke. Okay, so after having tried the roasting smoke technique, it clearly indicated that there were no shorted capacitors. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and get a new camera because I think capacitors are not the suspects. And I seriously doubt if the inductors have anything to do with this here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get a new camera and see what happened next. Here's the new camera. And that's the, the old camera that I took out. Let's put a new camera back on and see if it works. I'm not going to connect the front-facing camera right now. All right. Let's switch it on. Looks like the checking is gone. Okay, now I'm gonna try it just to hold it very still. Okay, doesn't shake anymore. Problem solved. Just replacing the rear facing camera, that's it. Okay, I guess this is my lucky day. All right. Okay, so let's test the rear camera for the last time. I seriously doubt it is going to shake. Photo? What about video? Oh, 
Okay, so the checking has stopped. Looks like um, replacing the rear facing camera has solved the problem. Okay, so that's the end of rear facing camera replacement video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy.